Welcome to another episode of the Dan Lok Show. Today, I am super excited. It is long time coming. Long, 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 long time coming. I'm talking with Ryan Dice. Ryan is someone I've been known for like for so many years. We've been marketing online for so many years. CEO of Digital Marketer. You have heard of the, that world-class conference, Traffic and Conversion. Ryan, so happy to have you. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Good. Really excited to be here. Appreciate all the kind words. No, no. Ryan, I know we've been marketing online for, for so many years. Talk to us. How did you even get into um, internet marketing? I mean, my, my, I started back in 1999. So this was, you know, I was a freshman in, in, uh, in, in university. At the, I was at the University of Texas right here in Austin, where I still call home. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like I'm sure a lot of people who get into, into internet marketing and entrepreneurship, I need to make some extra money. Yes. And um, 1999, you think about it, you know, this was kind of, it was definitely pre AdWords. Google at that point was just a science fair project. Dial up, right? Oh, I mean, well, no. So the beautiful thing is because I was um, a student, oh, um, yes. my dorm was one of the first to get high speed internet. Oh, so wow. I roll in, yeah, and I've got high, I got high speed. Awesome. This was like DSL type stuff. So wow, that's very. It nice. was, uh, oh, it was, it was great. But you know, in 1999, it was the the start of kind of the kind of the tail end of the dot com boom before it busted. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, just I, I wanted to make some extra some extra money, and and I, I looked around at all my options, which you know, at 19 years old, no money. Uh, the web seemed like a really good place to start. And I remember I started out just trying to do web design, like that was. I was going to be a web designer. That's how I thought I could kind of get my way into the dot-com space. Uh, yes. uh, that didn't work out so well. My only yeah. client was actually a lactation consultant, um, oh, which I don't know if, if you know what that is, but uh, four kids, very thankful for these ladies now. But at the time, it was a little bit strange building a website for you know, somebody who helps nursing moms breastfeed. Um, <laughs> she wasn't able to pay me, though, for, for the website. And so kind of as payment, she gave me this ebook that, that we had helped to help to produce that was on how to make your own baby food. So the very first product that I ever sold online was an ebook on how to make your own uh, baby food. I remember putting up the website. I remember optimizing it for Alta Vista, and uh, you know Alta the- Vista. Yes, Alta yeah. Vista. Oh my God, that's right. Yeah. That's right. All those you know, all those crazy search engines at the time, and waking oh, up the next morning. Overture. And- overture. <laughs> Oh, yeah. well, I, I did it when it was GoTo.com. Oh, yeah, GoTo, yeah, GoTo.com, man. Oh, yeah. that's right, that's right. First paper yeah. search engine. And so I, I remember making that first sale and thinking, wow, this, this might be a thing. So make a long story short, um, it's kind of what I've always done. You know, I, I've always, you know, looked, in, into, looked at the web and said, well, what do people want? Why aren't they being served and how can we best serve them? And um, so that's kind of where everything started. The and, and, you and know, venture did, sort of grew from there. And when did you start uh, digitalmarketer.com? So Digital Marketer was officially formed as a company in 2011. Yes. Um, and that was actually at the very, that was at the third Traffic and Conversion Summit. So mm-hmm. you mentioned our event, Traffic Conversion Summit. Yes. Uh, we just celebrated our 10th TNC. So TNC number 10, 10 we just years. did. 10 years, yeah. And the first um, year, how many I, people were there? The first year? 180 something, you know. And the one that you just finished, how many? Just under 7,000. Yeah. So it was just like amazing growth. Amazing. And, and it's a lot of it's been growth in the industry, right? Like what started out as kind of this, this little, you know, weird side project that nobody quite was sure what you were doing is now it's a thing. It's an industry. It's a profession. It's, it's how people make money. So I, I don't I think, think that I can I mean, you're, you're like claim all the credit. I think, I think you're too humble because within our industry, within the, just the internet marketing space, I believe everyone that I talk to, they talk about different conferences and digital marketing conferences, traffic conversion, everybody's saying this is like the top. Like if it's not number one, it's number one and two, like in the entire wow. space. So I think, I think super, super humble. Like everybody's like, yeah, you, maybe you missed the other one, traffic conversion. You want to know like what is working. And I, of course, the way you run it, the breakout rooms, you bring on different experts. It's always very much practical what is working right now in the industry what's happening no fluff you walk away with a ton of value you can implement immediately that's always the feedback i hear from everybody right so i mean that's, that's the goal like, and going back to the very first year right you know in 2009 we did the first one mm. there were lots of events but they weren't very good i mean there were yes. there wasn't they weren't content heavy and so i remember saying if we're going to do this it has to be a great event we want people leaving saying this is the best event i've ever been to Yes. Um, we lost a lot of money on the first one because we didn't focus on profit, but uh, it would, you know, we did a second, a third. But I remember that, that very third, that third traffic conversion summit, 2011, looking out at that point, a room of almost 800 people 
Mm. and just saying like, this is a thing, you know, this is a business. And so that was the year that we decided, you know, let's stop treating this marketing training stuff as just a side hustle, as a side business that we do in addition to all the other things. Let's make it a company. And that's when Digital Marketer is born. It still didn't really become a real thing until 2014 when we launched Lab, which is our subscription program. So Mm, talk to us about that. Talk, Talk to us about Lab. What inspired sure. you to start that? Yeah, I mean, that's really simple. Netflix um, I, I, at the time. And I've, so I've been selling courses on how to do marketing since 2000. Um, yeah. so people were asking me, how are you doing it? So I produced the course. And that was how I funded all my other entrepreneurial endeavors was I would create a course. I would sell it. I'd raise some money. And then I'd go and start what I believe was a you know real business, whether it was a software company or a publishing company. Mm. Um, the training side to me never felt real. It always felt as like this thing that I did over, over there to raise money for the real things. Yes. So when, when we launched Digital Marketer in 2011, we were still doing the same launch model that everybody else was doing, right? Mm-hmm. Come up with a product or two a year, you know, do a big product launch, sell it for $2,000, go back and, and, and do it again. And, and nothing against the launch model. Jeff Walker is a dear friend of mine uh, who kind of came up with the product launch formula. And it's brilliant. Mm-hmm. But at the time, we had turned it into a business model. It's not a business model. It's a promotional model. And, and I was just looking at it. What are the companies that I felt like were really changing the game? And, and I saw what Netflix was doing in entertainment. And I said, let's create the Netflix for marketers. So in 2014, we took all of our content, all of our courses, courses we had sold for five, 500, a thousand, $2,000. We yes. said, let's put them all in one membership area yes. and charge $40 a month, 38, 60, we'll call it lab. And it'll be great. And it was great. People loved it. And we almost went broke <laughs> because <laughs> what we, happened there? We, well, I mean, you pivot from, from selling a product for $2,000 yeah. where you realize basically the, all, the, the, the lifetime value of a customer, you realize it on day one. We right. switched from that to saying, we're going to realize the lifetime value of this customer over a much longer time. Now, in the aggregate, over time, it winds up being a lot more money. The revenue is a lot more beginning. predictable. Cash flow sucks. Yeah, but in the beginning, it's tough from a cash flow perspective. It was tough. So yes. we're robbing from Peter to pay Paul. You know, we were still doing the occasional product launch to, to cover payroll. 2014 was a tough, tough year, but we were, you know, we were growing. And the, that was really the year that the brand was born, it was in 2014, you know, 2015. Mm. And also, I think uh, from what I'm observing, right, from everything that you do, I think from the, let's call that the, the product launch, the internet marketing space, but I can see you, just digital marketer transition, it's it's a different brand, right? It's it's lack of better word, less hype. You, you, you focus more a broader market, focus on also serving agency. I could see that, right? A much broader market, make it more, has a wider appeal. Like I could see the rebranding and the direction, right? And same thing with traffic conversion. Is that right? Yeah, it was, and it was intentional. And, and uh, you know, where a lot of it came from was, was recognizing that marketing as a whole was getting harder. So this idea of I'm going to go start an online business mm. isn't as easy as it was in a lot of ways, it's easier, like the technology, like the, the, the things that it was really hard just to build a website when we first got started. Yes. Right. Yes. Now that part's easy. Yes. Um, getting traffic was, was hard back then. Now with Facebook and you can just go buy it. Like, so, so many things are easier, but because they're easier, there's more competition, there's more noise and it, it is harder to break through. You have mm. to really bring it now. Mm. And, and at the same time, what we saw is kind of the old big dumb company started to get it. The big oh, dumb okay. companies getting mm-hmm. getting wise to it, saying, oh, "Maybe this internet's a thing. Yeah. It's, it's a real thing now, right?" <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I remember realizing. I remember raising, you know, asking everybody walking out at, at I think it was traffic at first or something at four or five, and going out and saying, "How many in here are business owners?" Mm. And I didn't see as many hands go up, and I was surprised. I was like, "Okay, how many of you were sent here by your company?" And I saw a significant chunk of the hands that went up, and I mm. thought, you know, marketing is now a profession. We need to start serving the professional marketers, not merely the entrepreneurs, because everybody needs marketers. And frankly, the category of marketing is much bigger than the category of entrepreneurs who want to, who need to do marketing. Correct. So it was tough. Right? We didn't want to abandon the ones that, that, that we were serving. We, did, you know, we got a saying in Texas, like dance with the ones who brung you, right? Uh, yeah. We wanted to keep dancing with the ones who brung us, yeah. but we also frankly wanted to elevate what they thought about marketing. We, we didn't want them to say, oh, I'm an internet marketer. No, you're not. You're a business owner who leverages the web and internet and digital to market your business. You're a business owner, okay? You're an entrepreneur. You're a founder. Uh, So we really wanted to to elevate the category 
um, both our category and the, the category of the people we were serving. At the same time, yeah, expanding into you know digital agencies, serving those folks as well. Mm. And it's just been seeing where the energy and the momentum was around marketing. And uh, so that's, that, that's, that's part of the reason we did it. And just wanted to elevate the brand. And it's so interesting because you and I know, like I started back in 2004 marketing online, right? We're, like we've been both doing it for a long time. We're like, we feel like we're dinosaurs because we've seen like a lot of different things. And it's interesting. And I want your perspective on this because within that period of time, you and I can think of so many names. And of course, you know so many of them they come and go, right? Yeah. Like you have the experts or, or the, the educators or the gurus and, and they, they come in and do a launch and they do a program and then disappear, right? And then like, like back then, how many started to how many are still around, right? That's right. a very, very small number. Talk to us, like, I'm just curious from your perspective, what happened there? Why that happened? Why, like, why just within the industry that just people... It's almost like they don't last. I don't know why. Like they just disappear or they give up or they do something else. I mean, I think people got in it because they wanted to, to make as much money as possible. And, and I think anytime you're entering a space with the sole purpose of extraction of value. Yes. So yes. if your thing is, I'm going to step into this area and I'm going to extract as much value as I can. Mm. And you don't actively seek. Um, if you don't strategically seek to put value back in, mm. then ultimately your days will be numbered. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's simply because, so the, here's the way I look at it. I'll give you a bit of a framework for it. Yes, yes. Um, branding. Branding is, is kind of a, a bit of a dirty word amongst people who came up in our, our generation. Like branding was, you know, oh, look it, I've got the fancy logo. And, and that's the stuff the big dumb companies do, right? Direct response, However, right? Yeah. Right. We're direct response. We, yeah. we measure, you know, we actually make money. They're dumb. Like, what I've realized, and frankly, that's a false dichotomy. Um, all the branding folks need to understand direct response, and they've come our way a lot, which is why they've gotten really good at it. Yeah. Direct response people need to get better at branding. And here's how I would define branding. Branding is making a deposit of relational equity. Oh. Okay, branding is making a deposit of relational equity. I love it. I that's love what it. we're doing. Mm. So when, it, yeah, when, when, when Coca-Cola runs an ad, you know, the ad in the 1970s where it's um, the Hilltop ad and and they got all the, you know, hippie kids singing, you know, if I could buy the world a Coke and they make people feel, you know, yeah, good about it. It's good feeling. Yeah. yeah. They're making deposits of relational equity. When a, when a beer commercial makes us laugh, they're making a deposit of relational equity. Selling direct response is making a withdrawal of relational equity. Oh, they're, so making a, they're making a, a withdrawal of relational uh, equity. Now, there's nothing wrong with making withdrawals as long as you have adequate deposits. What I believe was happening in kind of 2005 to 2012, 13, 14, when we saw a lot of these people come in and go, mm. there was so much energy and enthusiasm around the web, mm. around digital, that mm. they showed up with those deposits of relational equity, of, of relational excitement already there. Mm. And they made withdrawals having never made a deposit. Mm. They made withdrawals having never uh, gone back in and, and sought to serve that, that market and, and, and that community. And as a result, their bank account ran dry. Mm. And, and or maybe go negative, that, right? Like it's like yeah, a over negative. withdrawal, yeah. And when you look, if, if you eventually make a withdrawal from a bank where you don't have funds on deposit, that's called bank robbery. That's yeah. theft. Yes. And I think there were a lot of people back then who stole from the market. They took money and they didn't give value over and above what they, what they took. I think they gave a lot of people who were trying to build brands and give value a bad name. Right. And, uh, and I think that happened. I think there were also people who came in, they had one great idea one cool hook, one cool concept, but they didn't one have product, in the right? picture. Yeah, one product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I got this one, there's this one hook, this one strategy. Ooh, look at this, this angle, this inefficiency that I found in Google or Facebook. Mm -hmm. Well, that loophole closes and they're out of business because they define themselves by this one cool thing they found. That's mm -hmm. why we want to be digital marketer. We wanted to define ourselves by the category, mm -hmm. you know, not by the one simple little hook. So I think a combination of those two things are why People came in, flamed out, and it happens in every industry. This isn't unique to us. It happened in the freaking railroad industry. Yes. I you think know, it happened. It just when it happens to our industry, it's more public because we there are a lot of people watching, and we we touch many people's lives. So it feels like it's it's more public. I'm also want to know like when it comes to because you work with so many marketers, right? You you see the numbers, you see what works in industry. So two questions. First question is, uh, let's say nowadays we're now. In, in, within this year or in the next 12 months, 
what has been working very, very well for you, for digital market or for the clients that, that you serve in terms of bringing in customer, bringing leads? Yeah, I mean, so I started saying, I warned everybody in 2016 mm. at on stage at Traffic Converter Summit in my keynote, mm. ad costs are going up. Yes. They are going to go up, and they did. They've been up, you know, since then. They're they're up almost double where they where they closed out in 2015. Yeah. And I said the solution to this is we need to start building our pixeled audiences. So mm-hmm. I don't know how sophisticated your, you know, I don't know how sophisticated your your audience is, but that's mm-hmm. simply, you know, you can create custom audiences in Facebook and Google. Yeah. So you can. And um, yeah, so you have the ability to retarget. I know you know this because I follow, you know, I follow your stuff. Right? <laughs> you see, you see my ads all the time. <laughs> yeah, well, I, well, no, but what you do is I'll watch one of your ads. Yes. And then the, the next, you know, next time on Facebook or somewhere, you know, YouTube. And, and now I see the next ad that's in the series. Like you understand how to do sequential story-based marketing Correct. Within advertising by leveraging retargeting and custom audiences. Correct. Correct. The, the, the mistake that I see people make is they only do, um, they only do direct response. So what, what we've been doing, what I've been encouraging marketers to do is whatever you're spending right now on advertising, yes. take 20% of it and reallocate it to just a pure content play. Mm. You, there's probably take the 20% that isn't ROIing as quickly. You probably got 20% of waste. And look, if you can do 25, 30%, that's even better. Eventually, I'd love to see you get 50-50. Yeah. Um, but what, what we are doing that still works well, that nobody else wants to do, and this is why it's working, yeah. is we buy advertising to pure content, not disguised content, right? Yeah. Advertising to pure content. Yes. Videos on Facebook, YouTube, blog posts for the purpose. Of, now, some people will click through and find us and buy something. Yeah. Um, but in general, what we're doing is We're doing this to build our pixeled audience so that we can then follow up with relevant advertising again Mm -hmm. after we've made that deposit of relational equity. Now we can follow up with relevant, you know, relevant lead magnet or a low dollar product. Um, That's what we're finding works works really well to keep our traffic costs down. It almost ties into what you just talked about, branding versus direct response, right? We are, when you're doing pixel, you're building the audience, you are depositing, right, for, for future equity. And it, it, might seem, it might seem like, no, we want to spend a dollar. We're going to get like $2 back. No, you're going to spend a dollar and you won't see that return in a year. And as, as a marketer, you need to be okay with that, right? That, that you're building a long-term relationship. And to a point where you deliver so much value and so much content and people would be like, yeah, I, I want to know more, right? I, I, want to, I want to continue. I want to go to the next level. It becomes like the selling becomes 10 times easier. That's what I found, right? No, it does. And, and to that point, the other thing that we're doing is we added a, a, a direct sales component to it. Oh, okay. So we're building, so, so we're advertising to content, which isn't making us money. Now we're only allocating in the beginning 20, you know, 30%. Now we're much higher than that. Yeah. Um, and then all, if we're asking you for money, if we're asking you to opt in, if we're asking you to register for something, it's because you've already consumed some of our content somewhere. Yes. You're in a pixeled audience. We're retargeting you in yeah. other ways. We do not, just go out there and do a cold retargeting. Now, how do we try to capture as much of that as possible? Mm-hmm. Well, we need to have higher ticket, higher value programs. And this is not just necessarily coaching or you know, consulting. A lot of times people think about that in, in you know, the software space, just having enterprise type mm-hmm. programs where you mm-hmm. go after larger, mm-hmm. bigger tickets. Mm-hmm. And that's going to require that you actually talk to people though. So leveraging conversational marketing tools, you know, chatbots, these kind of things, but actually having people on your team yes. will engage people in conversation while they're on your website. Mm-hmm. It's amazing how many people want to cut in line. They want to, they want to bypass the funnel, yes. just go straight to the top and give you money. And you need those Slack adjusters. You need those, those wonderful, amazing folks to come in to help your economics in the early days. From a tactical point of view, how would someone, let's say someone watching this and they want to have, like maybe they have some, some closers to help them close, like well, from a technical point of view, how would they implement it? Is it having a chat or having a phone number on the website or like what, what is digital marketer doing? Sure. I mean, so it's a combination of those things. So one, yes, we have a phone number on our order form. Not that. Okay. What a crazy concept. You know, yeah. a lot of companies, they, they don't want to answer the phone. Like these people were there ready to give you money and you don't want yeah. to talk to them. Um, yeah. There's people who have that one last minute question. So that's a simple thing. Okay. Um, we send emails out to high value segments, not asking them to click, but asking them to respond. Oh. And when they do, we have a conversation via email. 
again, what a crazy concept. Like just connecting with people, right? <laughs> just to start a conversation. And yeah. then, yes, of course, like leveraging tools, you know, like drift.com and many chat. Um, so that when people are on your site, uh, they have the ability right then and there to start a conversation. And you can leverage a chat bot to do some basic filtering. Mm-hmm. Um, but at some point, you need that human engagement, that human person, that human being to step in and say, you know, what's going on in your world that caused you to show up today? You know, tell me about it. Like, what, you know, out of these three things, is there one in particular that, 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 you know, that out of these three challenges, the one in particular that you're working, you know, working through right now? Oh, that one. Yeah. Well, we got something that helps with that. Mm -hmm. Um, I found, you know, the, it's less about having, um, an entire sales floor and doing a lot of outbound and more just being open to talk to the people who are already there. I mean, that's the first step. And also identifying who are your high value segments. Who are those high value segments? Talk to us about that, like uh, for, for, for like maybe entrepreneurs who don't quite understand the term. Like, what does it mean? Sure. So, with, I mean, you've probably heard of the 80 20 principle, right? Yes. The Pareto principle, the idea that 20% or 80% of your efforts are going to come from 20% of your results. Yes. Within your audience, there is a segment that is that 20 that's giving you 80%. So, we found for us at Digital Marketer, it, it, it was agencies, you know, mm-hmm. digital agencies. We had no idea. When we, pro, we finally profiled, our attendees at Traffic and Conversion Summit a couple of years ago, yes. 63% of the agencies, wow. uh, 63% of the attendees were agencies. Amazing. We looked at who was signing up for our highest level programs. Yes. Who are they? Yes. They were agencies. And yes. of course they were because they need to learn marketing and they also need their team to learn marketing. Yes. So we created a program specifically for agencies. What do you know they bought? We also looked into our list and said, who are some of the companies who are signing up for Lab? Yeah. You know, we had Uber, rep, people who work at Uber and Etihad Airlines and HarperCollins and some of these big, massive companies. Yes. So they had members of their team as lab members paying $38.60 a month. Something, something is wrong there, right? Something, something is there. <laughs> Why do we, we have a conversation? Yeah. yeah as, soon as, as soon as we made an offer, once we recognized, whoa, we've got a high value segment that is, you know, marketing professional, marketing executives. So marketing executives and agency owners were two high value segments who were in our list and they were the ones that just happened. So a lot of it's just going and, and pulling up your list and saying, I'm going to stack rank all of my customers over the last couple of years. Who's given me the most? Who are they? Mm-hmm. And it's amazing. These trends will just pop out and you realize, God dang, they had to find me. I didn't go out looking for them. Yes. I, I don't. So an email, for example, that we send out to our list from time to time is, um, uh, open only if you're an agency owner. Ah, okay. Okay. Yes. And the email is, and, and the, 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 the body copy of the email is, uh, we have a special program. It's just for people who own agencies. Um, it's not for people who are thinking about starting an agency. It's not for people who, you know, had an agency in the past. It's not really for people who work at an agency. If you're an agency owner, um, that's, you know, doing at least a hundred, uh, I forget what the number a hundred thousand dollars a year mm-hmm. in revenue, you know, I'd love to hear from you. P.S. Yes, it is a special program. Mm. And it's just reply and let's start a conversation, right? Uh, we have an email that goes out to our list from time to time that, that just says, um, are you still looking to grow your marketing team? Now, if you're not, or if you're a solo, the answer is no, you're going to ignore that. Yes. Uh, but if you've indicated at some point that maybe you're interested in building a marketing team by, I don't know, showing up for a webinar on how to build a marketing team, right. then we're going to follow up to you know, engage you in conversation because we know that on average, those folks are worth five to $10,000, mm-hmm. right? Depending on what level they're in. So I mean, the average would be around 7,500, but that's kind of the range of, of, of product price. We know that agencies on average are going to be worth 7,500, you know, $15,000 is the, the programs that we have to offer for agencies. Mm-hmm. So that's a lot more than, you know, lab, which is now $50 a month or hundred dollars a month or $300 a month, but it came from, Identifying those high value segments. I, and could, how do we know I could see almost the two big lessons here. Number one, you first of all, you're very clear when you're making an offer who this is not for, right? You're, you're mm-hmm. saying, hey, this is only for you if you fit this criteria versus, hey, this is for everybody. So that's one brilliant thing that, that you did. But I think the second thing is being able to look at the list and not treat everyone on your email list the same way, right? Like you said, if, if it's, a, it's a VP of marketing, a marketing executive, 
paying like 50 bucks, right? Versus someone who's, like if you treat them all the same way, it, it shouldn't be, right? They, 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 they are willing to invest more. They're capable of investing in more that we need to talk to them, make them feel special. Hey, I noticed you are from this category. Here's how we can better serve you, right? I think that's a, right there for any entrepreneur, that's a game changer right there. I'd add a third, I'd add a third thing that we learned it. from it. I love it. Um, the, it is be willing so getting back to the tactics and what's working today, we used to optimize everything for let's get the highest conversion rate possible. So I used to tell people, hey, on your, on your opt-in form, mm. take out the first name field. Just ask for email address. You probably don't need the first name field. Mm. Um, and so, so get rid of that because you're going to get a higher opt-in rate. Mm. Well, now we're doing the opposite. Mm. You know, now I'm telling people what I would encourage your listeners to do is don't mm. just ask their first name, ask their company name. Mm. You know, ask them questions like, you know, which best describes you? I'm an agency owner. I'm a, so, so now our forms, you know, mm. when somebody registers, when somebody opts in, like mm. if you were to go to digitalmarketer.com, mm. the, the free membership thing, it's going to ask you which of these best describes you. Mm. And if you mention that you're a marketing exec, if you mention that you're an agency owner, guess what? We're going to treat you a little bit differently. We're yes. going to talk to you a little bit differently. Yes. Now, do we, get, do we get lower conversion rates by asking for this additional information? Yes, we do. Yes. But why, but we don't care anymore. It's not about optimizing for the conversion rates. It's about optimizing um, to have the highest quality list today uh, mm -hmm. of known high value segments, right? Yeah. That's what makes it, that's what makes it work. So that's what we're doing today. That it, it's funny. We're going back to a lot of old school stuff. Yeah. Like, like good old, good old telephone, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah we're, branding, we're doing sales. We're um, you know, we're, we're asking more questions on the front end to improve our data. It's, yeah. it's, you know, old school stuff, but it's, it's what's working. But those are the fundamentals that always, always work, right? It's not gimmick, yeah. it's not trick, it's not the latest, whatever tech, it's human beings, basic human psychology, right? Um, I'm also curious to hear yeah. your thoughts about social, right? As you can see, last few years, and I think a lot of even, I can see internet marketers, entrepreneurs, where... And, and I'm not just talking about pay ads. I'm just talking like social media in, in general. Um, I think a lot of them, they may be, they know it's important, but I don't think they pay enough attention to it or they don't do enough. Like what's your perspective in, when it comes to like social media, like content creation and things like that, how that fits into the whole digital marketing? So it's, it's important, um, but I'll tell you, it, it's, what people don't realize is it's TV. It's entertainment. Yes. It's radio. Yes. If you're going to do it, and you should, yes. you need to approach with that. It's yeah. not just it's a TV not, right here. It's, it's actually a TV. <laughs> yeah, it's a show. Seriously, look at look at your stuff. Yeah, exactly. You produce a show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you produce a show. You yeah. get that social is the new entertainment. It is the new channel that yeah. people use to be entertained. And so, if if you're going to succeed at it organically, mm. then um, then the, then you got to know you're going up against some of the best entertainers in the world. And to think that oh, you can just show up and like. Um, I'm, I'm not saying that, that you have to be, have this amazing professional studio or that you, you know, you got to cruise around in a, you know, Rolls Royce and, and stuff like that. Right. You, you don't, or is it a Bentley? I don't know. A really nice, you don't have to have all of that necessarily, but you got to be entertaining. Like you, like your stuff, you're, you're freaking, you're over the top. Like you're crazy. <laughs> right. I look at, I look at Gary Vaynerchuk, right. He's an entertainer. Yes. The people who do it well understand that they need to be, you know, an entertainer. Um, the, the perspective that we take at Digital Marketer that I take in particular is, I don't want to be the entertainment. So I don't want to be the star uh, mm. if, just because I don't want to. Mm. I don't. Yes. I don't want to. I'm yes. not going to. So we're a publishing company. Yes. We're going to find the people who, they, have, they are the entertainer. They're doing the thing. And I want to try to get them on my channel. So yes. we take it for more of a channel approach. So I tell people, if you're going to model a social media presence, don't mm. model me. Yes. Okay. Cause yeah. my brand is not, I'm the yeah. entertainer. I'm out there. I'm doing this. It, I don't want to do it. I don't frankly don't. Have and, and you know, and I think that's a, such an important point because I think sometimes people try to copy Gary Vee or they try to like copy me and stuff like that. You got to be yourself. You got to know, know your lane, right? If, if that's exactly. what, yeah. Like it's, you try to be Tony Robbins, you try to hundred percent, you'll fail because you're not Tony, you're not Gary, you're not me, right? be yourself and stay in your lane and do well. And, and that's perfectly fine. Right. It doesn't mean you like, it's a lot fine. Of, it, 
And there's models out there where you don't have to be that, right? Like, 100%. so you can be a great marketer and align with somebody who is a phenomenal entertainer. That's right. Right? You can you can you can join up with those folks and do that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Guess what? Most of the people, like you and Gary, it's a rare person to find somebody who right. can really succeed at the entertainment side, who gets the character, mm -hmm. who who understands all that aspect. And yeah. oh, by the way, they're also a really great marketer and business person. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of those folks out there yeah. um, that that have all that in one in one package. Yes. So I, I love what you said. Stay, you know, stay in your lane and know that there's roles to be played mm -hmm. by folks who are not the star. You know, movies right. need directors, they need producers. Um, they need all kinds of roles around that, but social is entertainment. It is, it is radio, it's radio, TV, Hollywood. It's all that smacked into one. Mm -hmm. The studio set is open. You can walk on and flip on a camera if you like. Mm -hmm. uh, but once you flipped on the camera, you better show up. Yes. And, and knowing that it's, it, it is a, uh, it's a content machine. I always say like social media is like this, this content monster. You can never feed it enough, right? It, it will never be, be satisfied, right? And once you, like you said, you turn on that switch, and I think that's something I want to share with my audience. I have my hesitation too, right? Is this something I want to do? Because I know once I make the decision, like yeah. you cannot go back. You cannot be, oh, I'm all over social media. No, actually, I, I don't want that anymore. I kind of want to, no, once you're out there, you're out there, you kind of have to do it all the way. And I have my hesitation. But once I made a decision, okay, this it fits my personality. It fits my personal brand. It's I'm I'm comfortable with it. You have to be comfortable with it. Then then it's okay. Then it's just easy, right? Like I love doing this, creating content. It's easy for me. I can come on the set, turn on the camera, and we can go. Not everybody could do that, right? I think it's just like exactly yeah. stay or stay in your. It's lane. hard. I'll tell you, man. It's hard for me. Yeah, yeah. I, totally, I don't like it. I totally agree. After traffic and conversion summit, I curl up in a ball you know, <laughs> and, and just sit sit by myself. I mean, I mean, it, it's hard. You know, but I you're was, phenomenal I was at running a business, right? You're, you're, you're phenomenal in, in operation, right? So that's what I want to, I want to be the, I want to be the owner. I don't want to be the racehorse. Yes. You know? um, yes. I don't, I want to be the person in the owner's box. I don't really need the glory. I'm just in it for the money. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to be famous. I don't, well, I don't well, want it. So I just think it's important that people know there's, there's lots of ways to get what you want. Yes. You know? That's what's important. Look for models. You know, you're a model. I like to think that I can be someone. I'm just models all over the place. But don't try to be something that is that is really. I'm not saying don't push yourself, right? Mm. And I'm not saying don't because look, I still do it even though I don't like it, mm. right? So in the beginning, it's like, yeah, that I don't I don't like that, so I'm not gonna do it. What are you talking about? Do you like food and shelter? Get to work, mm -hmm. right? So. You got to do what you got to do sometime, but but also kind of know know what you're best at. I enjoy the strategy. I I enjoy pointing at other people and and being like, look how great they are. <laughs> I still get the money. Nice. So. I love it. I love it. So the second question I have is about scale, right? How do yeah. you scale a company? Like even through your career, uh, example, like you said, you, you, the product launch period, and then building digital marketer and scaling that, scaling your event. Like, what are some of the important lessons that you've learned as a CEO when it comes to scale? So you can generally scale a company from one to two million, to, you know, zero to one, one to two million dollars a year in revenue um, with just a really great offer or two. Okay. So a really great offer. I mean, that's really that that offer phase. If you can produce a good offer, if you have a good product, mm -hmm. if you realize how to articulate that, and that's why I tell people early on, the one skill you need to master above anything else is copywriting, right? know how to articulate, how to structure a really compelling yes. offer. Yes. So that will get you from zero to, to one to two million. Mm. From two million, you know, one to two million to 10, 20, that's a giant, fat, nasty, gross, no man's land. Oh, yes. It is tough. And I'll tell you, uh, I make, I've, in every business I've ever done, we made way more money at two million than we made at five. Because at oh, five million... Five. You got all the, you know, infrastructure. All your systems oh. break down. Nothing works anymore. The, yeah. pe you know, the people that you have are still there, and they <laughs> probably don't know how to get you to the next level. Right. You know, the, the the technology that you're using is held together by duct tape and bubble gum. Yes. Um, the cust you, the number of customers that you have, you can no longer support it. And oh yeah, the thing that got you here is now old, so it needs to be redone. Mm -hmm. And then there's competitors. I mean, so in every way, it's really really hard. So mm -hmm. two to ten million, you know, one to 10, that kind of range. It's all about systems. Yes. It's about processes. And if you can't learn to love process, if you can't 
um, learn to love the idea of creating some type of predictable selling system, even if the margins aren't quite as great, even if it doesn't create these massive, you know, boosts of income, the pivot that we made from selling courses a la carte to doing a subscription was because we needed to systemize that aspect of the business. Um, mm -hmm. The decision, we're not going to do any more product launches this year as a mm -hmm. forcing function. We have to figure out how to bring revenue in profitably and predictably. And so mm -hmm. two to 10 is what that's all about. After 10, I'm telling you, it's all people. It's people. It's finding the right people. That is the that is the only thing I've seen that the game doesn't really change between, you know, 10 million, about 50 and, you know, and hundred, yeah. a lot of the same growth pains show up again in, in a new way and with another zero attached. Yeah. Um, but the only, the only solution at that point is people, the game doesn't really change. It's weird. The technology yeah. solutions don't really change. Um, 100%. And then it's the people who could help you solve the problems together, right? And I think I think that's one of the things that maybe a lot of internet entrepreneurs they struggle because they are the ones behind the computer, kind of sometimes could be introvert, right? They're, they're working on their own, right? On, in their own little bubble, right? And the minute you go beyond that couple million dollars, now suddenly, well, like I need like people. What do you mean I need people? I don't want to deal with yeah. people, right? I I, I gotta yeah. manage people. Like it's the whole thing. It 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 almost it throws them off the game, right? And then before you know what they have well, a bunch they, of people, right? Yeah, and they say that, that oh, well, this nobody can do it as well yeah, as me. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know what? Here's what I'll tell you. You're right. There, no one will ever, it's likely that no one will ever run your business as it sits today as well as you would. So don't, when you're, when you're looking to scale, don't look for somebody to be you. Mm. Uh, look for somebody who is able to do that one thing that is really critical better than you. Mm. that one thing that's really, really critical. I mean, I'll let you in on a little secret and you know, I don't do marketing at digital marketer anymore. Oh, that's a mic drop right I there. <laughs> I don't run the Facebook ads. I don't write the email copy. Yeah. I don't do the marketing. I mean, and, and look, I, I'll still come in and, and drive strategy and, and I'll, I'll help with, um, you know, funnel architecture and things like that. But at this point, picture, picture, picture. you know, the, well, the people who run our ads, guess what? They're better at Facebook ads than me. The people who do Google ads, they're better at Google ads than me. The people, you know, the, 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 the folks we have on, on our promotion side, on that team who are crafting the, the email cam, you know, the campaigns and writing that copy, right. they're better at that than I am. Now, could I do all of it better than any one of them could do all of it? Probably. Yes. But they combined their combined efforts is 10 X what I could do. And then some it's an order of magnitude greater. So it's not about finding another you it's about cloning the best aspects of you and other people. And then accepting that there are people who do the things uh, who do every little bit of what you do better than you do that one little bit. Yes. How big is your team now? Like with running traffic conversion, is it two different separate companies or it's all under digital marketer? Yeah, no. So the, um, so my companies generally break into two groups. So we have um, rival brands, yes. which is the, all of our media and e-commerce companies. So that's like survivalf.com, sewing.com, makeup yes. tutorials, that side of the house. Yeah. Um, I'll be honest. I don't know how many people are over there right now. Um, I don't actively run that company. It was a couple hundred at one point. Okay. In um, uh on the the digital marketer side, so the B2B side, that's called the scalable company, is the holding company over there. So that's a digital marketer. Uh, that's um, still our interest in Traffic and Conversion Summit. Although I don't know if you heard, we actually sold Traffic and Conversion Summit at the end of last year. I didn't know uh, that. Wow, okay. Yeah, it was a really great, involved? really great exit. Not involved? Yeah, or? it was a company. I'm sorry? Yes, yeah, so you involved. So are you going to still be speaking or just you sold that completely? So that's... No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it was a great deal. So the company is um, Clarion Events. Uh, they're out of the UK. Second largest, I think, event management company in the world um, okay. owned by Blackstone, which is, I yes. think, the second largest private equity group in the world. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and, and so, yeah, the, what, what they're doing, um, Digital Marketer will still be the presenting sponsor of that event, meaning we still um, control all the production. So we still do all the programming for the event. I'll still be speaking it, at it. Uh, as far as the attendees are concerned, there won't be a change, but we get to leverage their capital and their expertise to scale yeah. the event internationally. Yes. So next year we're going to be going into the convention center. Uh, and you know, we look at wow. doing an East event. We'll also be expanding to Europe and, um, and Southeast Asia. So uh, is uh, having like traffic conversion in different countries? Correct. Yeah. Oh, Which is something we've wanted to do, but it's very capital intensive and frankly scary. So again, people, 
right? It started, starting to ask yourself not how, but who is, yeah. is a big change that you have to make. Yes. Um, but we still do own a significant chunk of that company. We didn't sell it out outright completely. We still own a significant chunk of that company. So there's Got digital it. marketer, traffic and conversion summit, some software companies that we run. Those yeah. are all under scalable. And that team just yes. um, under roof, like in office here is about 65. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. And within a company, who are some of the, the key people that like the way you structure your team? So you have your CEO, uh, like your COO, your CFO, how do you structure your core executive team? Sure. So I'm, um, I'm CEO. Um, I have my, my co-founder and, um, and business partner, Richard Lindner, is yes. the president. Yes. And so he is my only direct report. Okay. Um, and then Richard... He's actually, he's actually, an integra our, integrator, right? Yeah, that, okay. that'd be a good way to put it. Yeah, yeah if you go to the... Um, uh, what, sorry, well, that's the entrepreneurial... Yeah, yeah. 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 EOS. Yeah. yeah, EOS. Thank you. Yeah. Entrepreneurial Operating System. Yeah, but, so that, by that standard, he'd be the integrator. Got it. Um, Tom, Tom Litchfield is our head of uh, finance and, and uh, operations. And so okay. he kind of cleans up, cleans up all the messes. And then we've got Justin Rondo over marketing, Garrett yes. Holmes over product, um, Sophia Lopez over HR. Yes. Um, I mean, it, it, the, loosely the way that Marcus Murphy had partners, yeah, I, don't, I can name them all, but then it, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to forget somebody. The, the, the way that we loosely structure all of our companies yes. is, um, I think about it in three silos. There's okay. product. Product, okay. Um, there's revenue and yes. there's operations. Okay. Product, okay. they are uniquely responsible for producing amazing products and making the customer happy. So we actually have our customer care department on the product team. Because I want that feedback loop. I want the product people getting, a lot of people throw that on the operations team as though they're a mess to be cleaned up. Customers are not a mess to be cleaned up. Mm. And so, um, so the so customer care is on the product team, um, you know, the different folks that are handling. So it, with our software companies, obviously product and dev, that's all product. Mm -hmm. Then there's revenue, revenue, sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's going to be the head of marketing, head of sales. Exactly. They're going to be everything in, funnel. in that org. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, and then operations, uh, the way that we're structured is operations is centralized over all of our different brands. So okay. operations is centralized. Uh, so accounting, legal, finance, HR, all that stuff uh, mm -hmm. is centralized and it serves all of the underlying brands. Um, product is not centralized and marketing is not, uh, is not centralized. We have that done at the underlying brand level and each mm -hmm. brand has a general manager that's responsible for that. Mm -hmm. They report into Richard. So. I, I love it. Oh, this is so, this is so good. Uh, Ryan, I'm curious with Digital Marketer, what's your vision for the next, say, say three to five years? Like now you sold off the traffic conversion. Where do you want to take Digital Marketer? And, and, and which is where you see the, like, the company's going. Sure. So um, where I'm really, where I see training as a whole going mm. is I see us going back into like, into an apprenticeship economy again. I mean, I look at the student loan debt crisis, um, mm. I look at, uh, you know, I know for us at Digital Marketer, we're hiring. We would love to hire people, but nobody knows how to do the things that we need to hire for. The schools aren't teaching it. Yes. And so between the skills gap, between the student loan debt crisis, if you look at the different diversity initiatives that, that companies want to implement, I mean, we would like to hire more diverse people. But if you say that the only people who can come and work for you, you know, are people who, you know, graduated with a degree in the States, at least in Texas, where we are, you're going to wind up hiring a white dude maybe a, a white female, mm. you know, that's just the reality because mm. the, the cost of, of college, it just does not attract as diverse of a, of a workforce. If you put those constraints in place, that's just the data. Yes. So I think the way that we solve this is by saying, you know what, you don't have to graduate with some degree. The, the credentials economy is gone. That's not really, it was here for a very brief period of time. Anyway, it used to be, you came into an organization, they taught you how to work, you worked there for a while, you were thankful that they taught you how to do this, and you either grew within that company or you left if there was a bigger opportunity. Correct. I, that's where I see this going. And that's what we've been doing without re even realizing it at Digital Marketer. We've been training digital marketers who are starting their own businesses, they're going into companies, they're launching agencies. We now want to spread that out across all aspects of business. So I really kind of want to build, you know, really the B2B Netflix of training. Um, you know, of corporate education. So digital marketer is a part of it. Um, we're looking at expanding into sales training, um, leadership training, all those areas, uh, and, and really packaging it under one 
um, technology platform to facilitate it. So digital marketer is, uh, is certainly the first part. We don't want to stop doing it. Marketing's, you know, a passion, but I see it as one underlying brand under a broader strategy that I, really, I think is where it's where business is headed. It's mm -hmm. where employment is headed. The work, you know, workforce is headed. And I think it's going to help a lot of people. I totally agree. And I think it's also now, I love what you said, credential economy is kind of the job economy. I mean, that is dead. Now it's more, I call that the skill economy, right? It's what kind of skill set that you have. It could be digital marketing. It could be you're very good with Facebook or funnel or any of one of these skills, but how you use it, you're not going to necessarily use it as a, I'm going to work for this company for 10 years. It could be you're doing it as a freelancer, do it as a, as a digital agency, or it could be you work with uh, one or two people, your key clients, and you can help. Like there's so many ways you go about it versus, oh, I've got this skill, I'm going to work for this one company. I think like people need right. to be way more flexible, right? And, and that's just reality. That's how it's done in Hollywood. That's it's how true. movies are produced. It's true. You know, that's the Hollywood model, right? You, you, know, you have a very small group of people who have an idea, yeah. And what do they do? They, 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 they go and get this director and they get this production company and they this a project together. lighting company. Mm -hmm. They come together for a project. They produce something amazing. They all leave. They high five. And they said, that was fun. Let's all do it again. Yeah, let's do it again. Yeah, number part two, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. let's go. Let's come back again later on. Let's bring the band back together. I, um, I, I agree with you. I think, I think it's going to be a combination of, you know, both of those things. Companies training people to work for them and companies also, tr you know, just providing additional training for the, folks that are out on the periphery. But we just want to drive that. I, I just want to create opportunities. And I think for companies also to, not to cut costs, but the old way of like running it, it costs us too much. Versus now, if they could send their people to training, that's one way, or they could just hire people who are ready to take on that role and, and do it on a freelance basis versus on a salary basis, that also makes a huge difference, right? I mean, a lot of big changes are happening for sure within the industry. Yeah. So for my audience, if they want to find out more about digital marketer, find out, find out more about your program, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, I'd, I'd go to digitalmarketer.com. There's a button at the top where you can sign up for a free account. Um, yes. you, you'd also be able to see how we do that high value segmentation. So a little bit meta um, yeah. there. Um, sign, up for, sign up for a free account. If you want to check out our certifications, um, we have our lab subscription. If, if you're a lab plus member, which is kind of the, the middle tier at lab plus, you get access to all of our certifications and all the updates. And it starts at $95 a month. So that's a pretty smoking good deal. That's um, a, that's if you want to, no that is a no yeah. brainer. And I, I know yeah, the, the certifications all a cart for $495. So, yes. you know, if you're thinking about buying, you know, two of them, you might as well get an annual to lab. Yes. That's, that's the idea. And I think it's also a very good way to see which skill set that kind of fits your personality. Because you may not know, well, maybe I want to do funnel, maybe I want to do, I want to do like Facebook or, or whatever it might be, but it gives you a, a broad idea, overview of different skill set you could develop that maybe just cho choose one and then you go deep with it, right? Yeah, be T-shaped. That's what we tell people, T-shaped. Know a little bit about a lot and, and then, then figure out after you're learning it where you can go deep. Yes. And, uh, and so there's a lot of opportunities to do that. Don't just be, I know a little bit about everything. Great. You're worthless. Yes. I only know how to do this one thing. Awesome. You're replaceable and you don't understand the context. I right? love it. Be shaped. I love it. Awesome. Ryan, I appreciate it. Digitalmarketer.com. I'm much sure I'll put a link under the video as well. Thank you so much. I mean, it's been awesome. I learned a lot. Like I got to listen to this again, just the way you set up your company. I appreciate it. appreciate you so much. Awesome, Dan. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you.